Hi everyone, it's Mr. McLaughlin here. By now you've probably figured out that we're going to be making a pixel art explosion today. We're going to be using PiscalApp.com to do it. And on screen, you can see a really good example from Pedro Medeiros, who goes as Saint Eleven online. If you type in Saint Eleven, all one word, followed by explosion, or honestly, just about anything else you can think of, he usually has a tutorial for whatever you want to do. All right, now it's time to jump into Piscal. If you've already created an account, that's great. If not, I suggest taking the time to do it real fast. It's completely free. You couldn't pay for anything in this application if you wanted to. First thing we're going to do is draw a circle. Now you could try to do this by hand. There's also a really handy circle tool. Then we're going to fill it in with a solid color, something dark. Solid black is actually incredibly boring, so I'm just going to give this a little bit of a blue tint. And you can use your bucket fill to speed that up. Then, use your duplicate frame button, that's in the bottom right of your frames on the left hand side. And, we're going to fill this in with white instead of black. Again, solid white's really boring, so we're going to make it a little bit of an off-white. Then we're going to duplicate that frame. And we're going to give it a really bright yellow flash. Try to do some sharp edges, looks kind of like Super Saiyan hair. So we're going to keep these edges sharp and pointy, and in just a second here, we're going to add a little bit of a white highlight to the middle, and then we're going to duplicate that frame. Now you can see before I do anything else on this frame, I'm adding some little yellow pieces of shrapnel, or bits of flame that are flying out from the areas that I already have shooting out. Then I'm going to take a dark color, very similar to my original blackish color, and I'm going to paint a bit of a cloud over where my explosion used to be and erase array those extra tips that I don't need sticking out anymore. So this is the beginning of our smoke cloud. But we also want to see a fiery explosion, so I'm going to create some bubbles of a dark red. I'm starting with the outline so I can grab my bucket fill and then just dump yellow there in the middle, the same yellow I was using before. You can see the color picking tool on the left and on the right at the bottom of the screen is my swatches, a list of colors that I've used recently. So it's really easy to go back and grab those colors and use them whenever you need them without losing track or trying to recreate them. And right now I'm just painting in, kind of making some warping flames and clouds of orange mixing in with the yellow, trying to give this explosion a little bit of depth. Now I'm using a new tool, the selection tool, and I'm going to grab all four corners of my explosion. And after I select an area, I use Command X to cut it. Then I move the selection and I use Command V to paste it in a new location. So after moving these outwards a little bit, my explosion is fading or more specifically, the fire is fading. So I'm erasing away some of the fire and I'm also moving the colors around so that my explosion looks like it's shifting and changing. Uh, you know, fire is very dynamic. It's not just going to sit still. It's always changing. So even after I move these, I still want to change where the red and the yellow and orange kind of sit and how much of each of these colors is left. And I'm just going to keep moving this outwards. Now the smoke isn't going to fade as fast. The smoke's going to hang around, so I might be making some more smoke. Now I'm really just going to keep repeating this process. Uh, we're going to have eight frames in total by the time that we're done with this animation. And really the last four are just going to be taking this explosion, copying, or actually cutting, and pasting certain sections of it, and then erasing a little bit, changing the colors around. It's kind of hard to make any huge mistakes here. Just add more smoke, erase away so you have less of the fire, and keep cutting and pasting and moving it outwards. And before you know it, you'll have a pretty convincing animation. As I'm working, I want to make sure that everything in every frame is moving and shifting, even the smoke. The easiest way to check on that is by looking up in the top right-hand corner at my animation preview window, and there I can see every frame playing in a sequence. Now, if you're looking at your animation preview and it looks really small, if you just hover on that window, you will see a button that will let you make it look larger. The slider below changes how many frames per second we're looking at, so you can speed that up or slow it down until it looks good. 
You can also pop it out in a separate window and make it full screen like I'm doing right now so you can really get a good look at what our finished animation looks like. Now this is pretty darn good I think for just doing 8 frames. Of course you could drastically improve this by adding more frames. Old school games didn't use a lot of frames in their animation, but newer games use dozens and dozens for every animation. So if you want to, take your time and push this even further. Finally, don't forget to save this to your gallery by clicking here and here. It's also a good idea to click here and here, which lets you save this and download it as a GIF, and you can do this without even being logged in. If you've downloaded your animation as a GIF, go ahead and share it with us on InstaSchool.